From our last video, we reminded ourselves that math exercise is mostly about wiring our brains to become better problem solvers. This will hopefully arm us with the skills needed to understand and solve new problems that are the result of our exponential progress. Thankfully, you've been working to become better problem solvers for many years now. With polynomials, we learn to recognize terms that have the same variable parts, all raised to the same powers. These similar terms can be combined to simplify our math expressions. Recognizing terms with the same variable parts extends our ability to work with polynomials, including adding them together. To help us with clarity and order, we'll use something you've likely seen in algebra already, using brackets to group items in a math expression. For example, if we were going to add this trinomial and this binomial together, we would add brackets to each, as shown here. Make sure the polynomials are in standard form, and then start looking for like terms. For the first example, we'll use algebra tiles to help visualize and combine the like terms. In both polynomials, the leading term is at x squared. We have 4x squared in the first one, and 2x squared in the second. So, when we combine the coefficients, we get 6x squared. The 3y doesn't have a match as it is a unique term, so it remains unchanged. And the constant in the first polynomial is negative 6, and in the second, positive 3, which of course gives us a combined value of negative 3. For this next example, we use colors to identify the like terms. As you find like terms, you can go ahead and add the coefficients to combine them. So we add the 3 and the 1, and we get 4y squared, and the 1 and the 2 to get 3xy's. Any term without a match remains the same, always remembering to include the negative sign if it's a negative term. Our constants combine to be 2, and we are done. In the example we just did, you could use shapes to help you sort like items as well. Find something that works for you. Here's an example of how it might look. You can also put lines through terms that you've combined to show that you have identified and included them in your answer. As the number of polynomials increases, or they get more complex, you may want to consider rearranging them vertically to add them together. To do this, we borrow a lesson you learned long ago with addition. When you went beyond simple addition, you learned to stack the numbers vertically to make it easier and more accurate to combine them. As a young mathematician, you were careful to line up the ones with the ones column, the tens with the tens column, etc., etc. Then each column was summed below. In this example, we have 1,478. We can use a similar strategy when adding polynomials if we replace the columns dedicated to place values with columns for matching terms. Let's try the last example we did using this strategy. Give each term a column for the first polynomial, making sure to include negative signs for negative terms. Then line up the matching terms for the second polynomial in the row below. You may have noticed we have a space without a term. This is similar to a number where one of the place values has no value, so zero is needed to make sure the columns still line up. You could put a zero value in your table, but it's perhaps more helpful just to see the concept. Hopefully you can see that if you extended the columns, or the rows, you could tackle adding just about any combination of polynomials. Now we can add the terms vertically and write the combined values below. As you can see, this is of course the same answer we got adding them horizontally. Here's a relatively simple addition question we can try. What terms are matching? We have two pairs of like terms. We can add the coefficients of the leading terms and combine the constants in our answer, always making sure not to leave out any unique terms. Now let's try a more complex question 
that we will tackle using the vertical strategy. Start by writing the first polynomial with enough columns to make sure that no terms are lost. Note that even though the first polynomial doesn't have a constant term, we need to make sure we include an extra column as they are found in the others. Write the second polynomial below, carefully lining up like terms, and do the same with the third one. Now we can add all terms vertically to get our answer, and write the new polynomial as the sum of the three we just added. Adding simple polynomials can be done like adding simple integers. Find the like terms and combine coefficients and constants to solve. But, just like we would for adding more challenging numbers, as the polynomials get more complex, it is advisable to add them vertically for accuracy. You can see and will continue to observe with our next few lessons, much of what we're doing is extending and finding new applications for the basic skills you've been learning for many years. In our next lesson, we'll introduce subtracting polynomials, 